Packing for winter in Europe, especially in a carry-on, can be very overwhelming. But I promise by the end of this video, you are going to be a total pro at it. Hi, I'm Christina from happytowonder.com and over the past 10 years, I've been living in and traveling extensively around Europe. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to pack your suitcase for winter travel. And I'm gonna be leaving specific product links in the description as well. Stick around until the end and I'll even give you a winter in Europe packing checklist that is completely free. You can just print it out and use it as you wish. All right, now let's get started. And this is looking a bit cluttered. So why don't we clear our workspace? Great, that's better. Now, when it comes to packing for winter in Europe, the number one most important thing is that you layer for warmth. When preparing for winter travel anywhere, the basic formula that you need to follow is a good base layer, insulation layer, and an effective outer shell. Once you have this formula down, you can pack for pretty much any winter destination with ease. Of course, keep in mind that you should be checking the temperature for your destination before you go, because the way that you pack for north of Finland is going to be very different from how you pack for Madrid, for instance. But these basic guidelines should work no matter what, just tailor the thickness of your layers accordingly. Now, first and most importantly, you need good base layers. These are the secret to staying warm in Europe. What you're gonna wanna look for are thin, breathable tops that seal heat in. I honestly don't know why I brought this. I'm just gonna put it away. <laughs> now, the best material to look out for when it comes to base layers is something called merino wool. Listen, I don't really understand how this magic works, but honestly, this fabric is incredible. It wicks moisture, it's very breathable, and also it doesn't smell. You could wear one of these for like a week straight and it still won't smell because it is odor resistant and it's just honestly the best possible thing that you can bring with you as a base layer. That said, with all those magical properties, as you can expect, it's not gonna come cheap. So if you're looking for a more budget-friendly alternative, one thing that I really like is the Uniqlo Heat Tech. Uniqlo Heat Tech pieces are absolutely incredible for the price. Most of the time they're like 20 to 30 bucks depending on which ones you buy and they really do keep you super, super warm. So if you're looking for something that's more budget friendly, then I can highly recommend this line. Of course, it isn't odor resistant like Merino wool is, so you will have to bring a few of these to change in and out of because they can get a little bit smelly sooner than the Merino wool, but that said, they're still really good bang for your buck. I would recommend packing at least two base layers depending on the material. You know, if you're going for something a little bit cheaper like the Uniqlo Heat Tech, you might want three, just because as I mentioned before, they do tend to smell a little bit sooner. But if you're traveling with just merino wool, honestly, it's gross. It sounds gross, but you can actually get away with just having the one base layer, which means lighter packing, but maybe pack two if you're paranoid. Some other common alternatives include bamboo and silk, but I personally haven't experimented with those. Honestly, once you have the merino wool, you're not gonna wanna try anything else. Next up, you're gonna want thermal leggings. So very similar principle to the base layer tops, you're gonna want two sets of thermal leggings to go under your jeans or your regular pants or your stockings if you're wearing dresses. And this is gonna help keep you so warm considering how thin they are. So again, the optimal material to look for is merino wool just because you know it's not going to smell, it's gonna be more durable, it's gonna wick moisture and be perfect. But again, the Uniqlo Heat Tech line does do leggings as well. These ones are one of them and they are really, really comfortable and they keep you very warm. So a lot of the time people ask me, do you need to bring snow pants for a European Christmas market trip? And honestly, the answer is, unless you're planning on skiing or trudging through a bunch of snow, the answer is no. You can easily just wear your jeans, but make sure you have some thermal leggings underneath. All right, next up, what we need is a solid insulation layer. Now, when it comes to an insulation layer for a winter trip in Europe, honestly, the way that I see it is it's almost like a bonus warm layer just in case it gets really cold unexpectedly. The two most common materials that you hear about when it comes to insulation layers is either down or fleece. So down refers to things like this that have you know little feathers inside that create these pockets of warm air that keep you warm. And I personally think that these offer the best weight to warmth ratio. So if you're looking to pack light, they can be really, really good for your trip. So for me personally, I've got this vest that I bring with me everywhere. And the cool thing is it actually folds up super, super small and that's a really great perk of down. It even comes with this pocket. So I'll show you just how small it can go. As you can see, it can fold up really small so you can just put it in your bag and have an emergency layer. And I know I sound like an, a Uniqlo fangirl, but honestly, their basics are amazing. So this is also from Uniqlo. Now, lastly, what we need is a warm outer shell and warm jacket. 
So hands down, the most important consideration for when you're packing in Europe is what jacket you bring. And that's just because this is going to be on top of every layer that you bring. It's gonna be in every photo. So you have to make sure that you love it. And so choosing the right jacket can be really important. Now, there's a few things that you definitely need to make sure that you look out for when it comes to choosing a good jacket for winter in Europe. So if you're only bringing one jacket, you have to make sure that it's waterproof and windproof just because winter in Europe is really unpredictable. And I think that actually having a jacket with a hood is way more important than bringing an umbrella. And that's just because in a lot of cases, you know, if you're walking in a crowded Christmas market, and you have an umbrella is just not a good time. So having a waterproof jacket, windproof jacket with a hood is definitely the way to go. Now, in terms of length, I would personally look for something that's about three quarters length. So it covers your bum as well. So while you're walking, it can kind of go over any outfit. The last consideration is try to bring something that's got hidden pockets. So any jacket I have these days, I need to make sure that it's got a hidden pocket like this one. So then you can just put your valuables, put your phone, put your wallet, wherever in there. And that way, you know, it's always going to be safe from pickpockets. And just having that ease of mind is just really fantastic. And also I would pick a neutral color just to make sure it matches every single outfit that you bring. I'm starting to see why I don't do videos in this format because it's just got <laughs> Got a lot going on. Cool. All right, the next important staple that we need to talk about is good winter boots. Now, again, if you're doing a city trip, you don't necessarily need boots that are this heavy duty, but the overall features that you should be looking for are really good grip because European cobblestones are no joke. You should also be getting boots that are fairly warm and if you can, boots that are waterproof. So I am a huge fan of Sorel. I got my first pair of Sorel boots a few years ago in Strasbourg. The boots that I was wearing, like these super cheap ones, literally split while I was walking down the street. So I had to run into Gallery Lafayette and just buy myself the first pair of boots I could find. So I bought Sorel boots there and I've been converted ever since. Honestly, they are so warm, so comfortable. Um, the pair that I bought back in the day was the Sorel Joan Explorer, and that's perfect for city trips. It was like walking on clouds. I absolutely love those boots. I still have them somewhere, I'm just not sure where. I move around a lot, and so this is a rental apartment. No clue where those boots are, but what I do have are these heavier duty ones that I bought quite recently. These are the Joan of Arctic boots, and they're really good for colder destinations. But as you can see, they're quite heavy duty, so you don't necessarily need boots as big as this, but what you need to make sure you have is good grip, and warmth and waterproofness. Actually, okay, I'm actually not sure why I should put these because they're boots, but it's okay. I'll, this is my coffee table, I'll sanitize it later. <laughs> okay, great. So with these fundamentals sorted, you're pretty much good to go. We can now move on to the next phase of packing, which is shirts and stuff. But honestly, so long as you have these in place, you don't actually need to worry about the performance of the sweaters that you bring or whatever, because this is gonna be enough to keep you warm. And so you can just focus on what's stylish, what makes you feel cute, etc. All right, after I awkwardly struggled through putting all these things on this table, now let's get rid of them and move on to the next step. Ah, clean slate. So next we're gonna be focusing on the other items of clothing that we're gonna to wanna to bring. So for me personally, for a week, what I would bring in addition to my base layers and bonus insulation is I would bring three long sleeve tops. Oh wait, I forgot to do the cute transition. So when it comes to packing your long sleeve tops, I would really advise against packing really thick, chunky sweaters, just because those are gonna be a pain to pack. But also if you have your base layers, you don't need to worry about bringing something that's really, really thick and warm. I had these all nice and folded and then I decided to do the transition and now they're just a mess. And if you have the space, I would advise also bringing a dressier, nicer sweater. So that would make like four sweaters total. Again, you can usually get away with packing four just because these are on the thinner side. So I would recommend bringing a nicer, dressier sweater, even like a sweater dress, just because, you know, it's Europe. At some point, you're probably gonna wanna dress up a little. So make sure you have something that makes you feel like a million bucks. Next up, let's talk jeans and bottoms. So I would pack two bottoms and what that means depends on you. So that might be like two pairs of jeans or two skirts or whatever. So for me personally, what I would bring for a week is I would bring a pair of jeans, maybe two if I can fit them. And I would also personally bring like a cute skirt or something. And I know that seems frivolous, but as I said before, sometimes when you go to Europe, you wanna look cute. So, so long as you have that warm base layer underneath, then you're good to go. So usually I'll bring two, bottoms and the key here honestly is to make sure that every top matches every bottom so that way you can mix and match your outfits it doesn't look like you're wearing the same thing every day so just make sure the colors all go together 
Now next is underwear. So assuming you are going for a week, I would pack seven pairs of underwear. And if you're a bra wearer, also two bras. I've decided to take the creative liberty to not show and fold all my underwear and bras on the, my coffee table just because I want to maintain like a bit of dignity. So um, you can imagine what that looks like. So in addition to those, I would also bring seven pairs of socks or way fewer if you go for merino wool socks. I know I've been talking about merino wool a lot, but this was like my gateway I don't want to say drug, my gateway merino wool. Like I once splurged on a pair of merino wool socks and I wore them for six days straight, just like to test and they didn't smell after the six days. So if you got a good pair of merino wool socks, which uh, yeah, there we go. Honestly, it sounds gross, but you could get away with just packing one pair because like I said, this fabric is magical. You can test it for yourself, it's wild. But anyways, if you're just bringing regular socks, then the only thing I would say is to stay away from synthetic fabrics, just because those can often keep heat in, they don't wick moisture, and then you get really sweaty feet and they start to smell after not that long. So to summarize, seven pairs of socks if you're bringing normal socks, um, or one or two pairs of merino socks if you wanna pack light and you trust, you trust the process. Now, in addition to the merino wool socks, I would also recommend bringing one or two pairs of thicker wool socks. And something like this that will keep your feet warm in case it's a chillier day. But again, because you're gonna be using regular socks as the base layer, you only really need one, maybe two of these. Cool. Of course, don't forget to bring something to sleep in. I usually pack athleisure for my pajamas instead of embarrassing Christmas ones. And that's just because if you're chilling at your hotel and you need to go out and grab something, you can go in your athleisure and you won't look like super weird and out of place. In general, people in Europe do not go out in their pajamas. So that's why I prefer to pack respectable pajamas. Cool, now let's talk accessories. So the first one that a lot of people forget is sunglasses. So it's really important to bring sunglasses because winter in Europe, as I said, is quite unpredictable. So sometimes the sun will come out and you're gonna want a pair of these. They're kind of, I feel like I need to wash these because they're very foggy. But anyways, these are the pair that I always travel with. They're just the classic Ray-Ban Toastmaster. I don't know, just one of the classic Ray-Ban ones. And anytime I lose my sunglasses, I just revert back to these because they are timeless and just really great. Also make sure you bring a scarf. I find that a nice warm blanket scarf usually does the trick. And the next thing you should bring is good gloves and or mittens. Now, in case it wasn't clear where I'm from, <laughs> these are the, like, the most Canadian accessory ever. To be honest, these are not the most practical gloves or mittens to be bringing on a trip to Europe, but I just love them so much. Something I would recommend actually over cute little Canadian mittens is getting a pair of gloves that actually is compatible with a smartphone. They make a lot of these these days that allow you to still use your phone even when you're wearing gloves. And the next thing you should bring is a fun hat. So this isn't the most stylish one, but I'm just using it for demo purposes because it is very thick and warm and wooly. You're gonna want something that can cover your ears because that's where you're gonna feel the chill the most. And the last thing that you're gonna want is a good day bag. So whether that's a purse or a backpack, that's totally up to you. Now, a really important consideration is try to pick one that's got a second compartment inside that's got a zipper. Because most of the time when you encounter pickpockets in Europe, they're gonna be opening your bag and trying to grab whatever they can find immediately. So if you have all your valuables stashed behind a second zipper, that's usually enough to thwart them. So it's really good to have that additional peace of mind if you have the, the second layer in here. And I will say instead of carrying a traditional wallet, what I actually bring as a wallet instead is a wristlet like this one. And it's super handy because if I'm going out at night and I don't need all my stuff in my purse, I can usually just bring this out with me, keep it in an inner pocket in my jacket. And that way I don't need to bring a full purse all the time. Now, in terms of optional extras, I would say if after you pack all of this, you do still have extra space, I might consider bringing an extra nice top. Like if you're planning on going out to a bar or something, you know, something that you feel very cute in, usually those don't take up much space. So I might bring one of those. I might also bring a cardigan just as an additional layer and also something to kind of like layer on top so that your outfits look a little bit different. But again, not absolutely necessary. And you can also consider bringing an umbrella so long as it's a small one. But again, to be totally honest with you, I do think that having a waterproof and windproof jacket with a hood just is more convenient. And if you're lucky enough to be staying in a hotel with a pool or jacuzzi, then don't forget your swimsuit as well. 
All right, now that we have everything, it's time to pack it all up. So for that, I think we need yet another clean slate. Now, because I am quite a minimalist traveler, usually I'll try to limit all my stuff within a suitcase, specifically a carry-on size one and also a backpack. So the carry-on suitcase I have here is the Delcy Chatelet Air. It is the smallest one that they have. So it's not just the carry-on, it's the carry-on slim. And I decided to get that because some of the European budget airlines honestly have the most ridiculous restrictions. So if you get the slim version, then that'll actually be able to fit, whereas the regular carry-on won't. So make sure you're always checking your airline specific luggage allowances because it can vary. And don't take for granted that they'll give you a regular size one because that's how a lot of the budget airlines get you. And for my personal item that goes under the seat, usually I'll bring my handy dandy Herschel backpack. This is the, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it. They've got so many now. Herschel Retreat, it's the Herschel Retreat backpack. So yes, this is the one I typically bring. It's small enough to fit under a seat, but it also holds a lot of stuff. I am now going to fit everything that I've shown you into just these two things. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to set aside your airport outfit because that is not going to go in your suitcase. So if you are traveling carry on only, what makes the most sense is, of course, setting aside your bulkiest items for the plane ride. So luckily, we can take our ginormous jacket, my pair of jeans and this one. And of course, the boots. You're going to be wearing your super heavy boots if you've got them as part of your airport outfit. So you don't need to worry about packing that. All right, so now it's already looking way more manageable. And so onto the next part is to like get all this into the suitcase. Now, if you've been on my channel before, you know I am obsessed with packing cubes. I love them. I think they are such a game changer when it comes to travel, especially for winter travel, because when you have poofy things like this or like sweaters, you're gonna want as much compression as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of these into different packing cubes. This is my favorite. If you're looking for a really long lasting one, this one still looks good as new and I've been using it for years. Usually what I do is I put different tops in one packing cube Cube, I put bottoms in another packing cube and then underwear and socks in one as well. Some people choose to do different packing cubes for different outfits, but for me personally, I'm not coordinated enough to set aside my outfits in advance. So I just put all my tops in one, etc. cetera. I can do that right now. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. So I'm probably just gonna do a little fast forward while I do this. Boom. And as honestly, I could probably fit one or two more sweaters in there. So as I was saying before, if you have like a dressier one or you wanna bring some extra options, you could do that. So boom, all of the tops are already in there. But there we go. So we've got our bottoms, we've got our tops. I'm gonna spare you from seeing me roll up every single one of my pieces of underwear and socks, but those are all actually in here. And this one right here is an Eagle Creek compression cube. You can see I've used it so much that the letters have worn off, but the function is still the same. It has an extra compression layer, so you can zip it up further. Boom, and then now you've got all the underwear and socks in there. Oh darn, I forgot my, forgot my wool socks, but okay. <laughs> Cool. So again, now it's all compressed. So as you can see, I've got pretty much everything in these few cubes. So now all that's left to do is to put things into the suitcase. All right, when it comes to packing the suitcase, typically what I'll do is most carry-on suitcases will have a second layer that's got like this zippered compartment. So I will put any soft things that need compression in there. Things that can be squished down. If you put that in like the fabric section, it's gonna compress it down even further, which is perfect. And I'm feeling bold, so I feel like I could even fit that in there. There we go. So all the clothes are now on this side. And then what I'll do on this side is I make sure I pack in and maximize the space as much as possible. And with anything like a day bag, usually to maximize space, I'll make sure that I've got stuff stuffed in there as well. Same goes for boots or anything like that. But at this point, we still have a ton of space, so you can definitely add more and not be so minimalist. Oh yes, I'm also missing a few toiletries. Yes, so electric toothbrush. I always travel with an electric one because I'm a bit of a diva. In a similar vein, I always travel with my hair straightener as well. I don't know why I'm showing you. It's just really pretty. It's a Dyson dual voltage, so you don't need a converter. And annoyingly, we have the cable for charging my straightener, which is somehow almost as bulky as the straightener itself. So now, as you can see, my suitcase is more or less full-ish. There is some space for souvenirs if I wanted. I could also bring a few extra things if I wanted as well. 
Not bad, not bad. And then... <laughs> I've been trying to film this video all day, so it feels like a triumphant moment for me. There we go. All done. And the last piece of the puzzle is packing my personal items. All right, so the way that I usually try to pack my personal item is I wanna make sure that all the stuff that I won't need at the airport is at the bottom, and the stuff that I will need to take out at the airport, like liquids, for instance, is at the top. So that way, when I get to security, I can very easily be like, oh, here are my liquids, here's my laptop. What usually goes on the bottom for me different cables and techie things. So put that at the bottom because I won't really need that at the airport. Other things I might need, I have my non-liquid toiletries. So like things like razors, whatever that I need to bring with me that aren't liquid, so I won't need to take them out. I'll also put those at the bottom. And then closer to the top is where I'll put things like liquids. This I'll usually make sure it's at the very top. And usually I would put my camera in there as well, but at the moment it is filming this video, so I can't show you that bit, but let's just pretend. I'm putting a camera in there and I'll also usually put a portable charger as well Cool, so now that's all packed It is a little bit heavy, but it will still definitely fit underneath the seat So it's absolutely perfect One thing I will say if you're traveling carry-on only then you probably won't need this But if you're checking a bag I would recommend packing an emergency outfit just in case your bag gets lost, especially with winter and holiday travel, you never know when your bag might not make it with you. So it's always good to have a backup plan. Well, all right, thank you so much for watching. I hope this packing tutorial was helpful. And if you enjoyed that, be sure to like and subscribe for more practical travel videos just like this one. I admit this one was a bit more unhinged than my usual thing. Um, I don't do packing videos and it's just, it was a lot. So yeah, be sure to like and subscribe for maybe tamer travel videos in the future. And I will see you guys next week. Oh, and as promised, I do have that free printable packing list. So just visit this URL here and you can go grab it. Cool, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week, bye.